Child World was an American chain of toy stores that opened in 1962 and closed in 1992. I want to say thank you for your suggestion. Attention, attention for rental units. If you've been scanning the area this week trying to calculate what store has the Nintendo action set at a great price, don't delay. Proceed directly to Children's Palace, where right now you can obtain the Nintendo action set for just $99.99. The two controllers or zapper light gun let your offspring play the two arcade quality games included, all at an extraordinary Children's Palace price. So proceed to Children's Palace and discover how much less toys can cost. Thank you. Child World was founded by Sid Schneider and Joseph Arnasano in Quincy, Massachusetts in 1962. From the onset, the company appealed to the children with their original mascot, Happy Rabbit. Many of the Child World stores had red interior walls, very high shelving, and mercury lighting. Another former employee remembered the high ceilings, but its walls were painted white with green and blue horizontal lines that span the entire perimeter. Oh, and going back to their mascot, Child World was originally a cartoon rabbit named Happy Rabbit, who sported the words, I'm happy, on his t-shirt. He was later replaced by a cartoon panda bear named Peter Panda, who was often depicted wearing overalls with his name printed on them. So I guess it fit in with the toy mascot cliches. Toys R Us had Jeffrey the Giraffe, and KB Toys had a toy soldier, or whatever his name was. One of the unique things about this store was that if you ever went to a mall or shopping plaza, you could see the Child World sign before you even parked because they all look like castles. In fact, Child World was largely known for making its stores resemble castles, complete with turrets, battlements, and three arches, two small and one large, in front of the front door. The corporate logo was written in a refrigerator magnet-like typeface. The design started showing up in newer Child World stores after the 1977 acquisition of Children's Palace. It was an unmistakable experience, a former customer said. Child World and Children's Palace literally look like a palace. These were the buildings with white brick on the facade, red top turrets on the side. Nothing else was like it. Forget the outside. What was important to every kid that stepped foot in that store was what was on the inside that matters. The regular toy paradise. After the acquisition of Children's Palace in 1975, Child World became the second largest toy retailer in the United States after Toys R Us, its chief competitor. In many areas, Child World stores were operated near Toys R Us locations. At one point, Child World was just so profitable, legend has it, they just threw out toys returned by customers. Occasionally, there would be stories of someone trying to sneak in at night and pull a Barbie doll or a G.I. Joe out of the dumpster. Kinda sounds like another company. Yep, you guessed it, Amazon. Most of their returns are sold to third parties, and the rest just end up in a landfill. After the acquisition of Children's Palace, Child World also began incorporating elements of the Child Palace store design into its stores that opened post-merger, with many of the new stores taking on a castle-like design. In 1981, the chain became a subsidiary of Coal National Corporation. Child World and Children's Palace also resembled Toys R Us a little bit. The chain was also known for largely a warehouse style of merchandising with long aisles and so-called overstock storage above selling floor-level shelves. At its height, the chain had revenue of over $800 million and consisted of 182 stores. 
For those who remember Children's Palace, the toy selection was extensive. There would be the main sellers like the other toy stores, but for whatever reason, if there was a hard to find item, Children's Palace would possibly have it over some of its competitors. One former kid remembers walking in and there would be a one-way path. It led to an overwhelming opening with all of the heavily stocked aisles for you to then choose from, which was a smart idea. The initial one-way path at the entrance would have made many of the new releases or top sellers available. Other hot items would be on the other end of the store. This is probably why the store always appeared to be packed. If you were looking for video games, then it was near the exit for many stores. Once again, good placement seeing as people would have to first walk past the newer popular, then walk across the warehouse passing all the other toys, which you had to stop and look at, of course, leading to the end of video games and other hide items. You could seriously find anything here, from dolls to action figures, bikes, playsets, gaming systems, typewriters, to above ground swimming pools. Sales had begun to decline by the late 1980s. In 1989, the chain announced a new 29,000 square foot store prototype designed to appeal to customers and real estate developers alike. The first store remodeled into the new prototype was in Framingham, Massachusetts. Initially, the prototype was well received with strong first day openings and good performance in a critical Christmas selling season. Owing partly to that success, Child World Management announced that the new prototype would be used to renovate 11 existing sites, and new market expansion would be targeted in 1990, 1991, and 1992 using the new design. However, Child World would not have a chance to implement the new design as problems began to arise. While the focus of Child World's management was primarily on growing the brand, their fortunes would have taken a turn for the worse beginning in 1990. That year, Peter Hayes and a large portion of his fellow executives were fired from the company. This was followed by a July 1990 recession that lasted until the following March and left customers with less disposable income. Unlike in past years, there were no new toy lines deemed must-haves that could bring in crowds into Child World and Children's Palace stores the way crazes like Cabbage Patch Kids and Teddy Roxman did in the 1980s. The biggest issue facing the company was the decision by Cole National to begin restricting the amount of capital they were providing to the stores, which consequently resulted in the company being unable to pay its bills. Vendors such as Lego responded by refusing to accept orders for new merchandise from Child World, which left stores unable to maintain fully stocked shelves. Its profile was not helped by Toys R Us's continued growth, as well as the chains being named a co-defendant in a lawsuit filed by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. In 1990, Child World ended its fiscal year with $830 million in assets, but carried over $1 billion in liabilities, and the final figures showed a deficit of $192 million. Problems also arose in February of 1991 when executive James Mayberry was found that he was misappropriating Child World's gross revenue to fund a museum he was attempting to open in Dracut, Massachusetts. Cole National was forced to perform a debt trade with another venture capital firm, Avon Investment Limited Partnership, in 1991 in order to divest itself of the collapsing toy store chain. Avon installed a group of former Toys R Us executives who sought to revive the Child World name, but nothing changed and as 1992 began, the company was forced to close 26 stores and leave certain markets where they underperformed. In April of 1992, Child World lost its line of credit and was forced to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection as a result. In the discovery phase of the case, findings by the presiding judge led a group of former Child World managers and 
coal national executives to file a class action lawsuit against Avon, accusing Avon of deliberately sabotaging the company so they could liquidate it and thus not pay them what they were owed. On May 7, 1992, Child World went public with its bankruptcy filing. 54 more stores were targeted for closure as Child World chose to focus its business on its northeastern United States stores, which were still profitable at the time. They also began to seek new sources of credit, with the plan being to keep the remaining 71 stores open for the remainder of the 1992 and all of 1993 as Child World worked to get itself out of bankruptcy. They continued to flounder and headed towards going out of business when another toy store chain, Lionel Kitty City, entered the picture. Child World suggested a merger and Lionel Kitty City agreed if they could finalize all the paperwork by the deadline in July of 1992. The company rushed to liquidate their inventory to improve cash flow and capital by having the chain wide clearance sale. However, it didn't raise enough money fast enough and Child World announced the change of plans. The clearance sale would now be a going out of business sale. By September of 1992, all the stores had been liquidated and closed their doors permanently. Child World's potential merger partner eventually would fall victim to liquidation as well as Lionel Kitty City went out of business one year later. So what are your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C Productions.